For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. This is one of them. Testing. Is that all right? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to The Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. We've got a, a little email straight away, Carl, from Nikki in Beverly Hills, California. She says, Carl, you rock. I hate it when Ricky and Steve ridicule you. I checked out your picture. Although your head is not normal, that's no reason to ridicule you. You look gimp, but I never judge a book by the cover. Cheers. <laughs> is that all you've got to say? Well... It's only because I've, I've got no hair, though, isn't it? That's why it gives that effect. No, it's perfectly round your head. <laughs> it's perfectly spherical head. Your face is slightly too big for it. It always goes over the, almost goes over the sides. Perfectly round head. Um, pug little nose. Funny gimp eyes with no expression. Hang dog look. Um, like a little mouth, like a little lamprey. Not formed, not human formed. The, the way your expression it, it is like you've had a lobotomy. <laughs> Yeah, head it goes weird at the back. It's got a little nod in it, like a. a, a, a it's it's really strange. Your face and you're stupid. We've had a lot of emails saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think he's just paraphrasing. But um, <laughs> talking of emails, you know, uh, a couple of I, don't, I can't remember which show it was, but you mentioned Carl that you'd uh, you'd only recently seen a uh, Chinese homeless person. Oh yeah, and it really surprised you because you'd never seen I've a never Chinese seen homeless one person. Now, and I actually went along with that. I, I I've never I've still never seen a Chinese homeless person. Well, now I can just tell you now that there's a f few responses from Los Angeles, people saying there are quite a lot of Chinese homeless people over there because apparently there's a huge homeless community in uh, in Los Angeles. So definitely if you want to see them, Carl, that's the place to go. But um, we've had one from Vancouver, Canada, from a girl called Amy, and Amy herself is Chinese, and she says that she realised herself that she, she'd never really seen a Chinese homeless person. And although she says that um, apparently Vancouver has the first or second largest Chinese population in Canada, she'd never seen them, and she actually went for a walk around uh, the Chinatown in her area right. looking for them and she could not find any on that particular day so um, again Canada obviously not a place to go for a Chinese yeah, homeless it, it was just a point though I don't want people sort of well hold on though wait, wait I'll stop you there hello Ricky, Steve and Carl I live in New York City and have seen a Chinese homeless person not only is he Chinese but he is also a midget he's been living on the streets for the last 30 years he used to dress in rags, but thanks to a, a, a coat drive, he's now wearing a fancy Adidas jacket, right? Now he encloses a picture. Uh, he says he gave him ten bucks to take the picture, um, and I've seen it, and he's a little yeah, Chinese I, I, midget fella. I'm just getting a bit worried that people are going out there sort of looking for these. Because, well, it, because they, you well, know, that's what you requested. No, 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 but all I was saying is I saw one. I didn't start saying, excuse me, can you just give us a smile? I'm taking your picture. <laughs> You know well, we've I mean? had loads of pictures of people. I know, and it worries me a little bit. And I mean, it's not too bad about the one who took one of a little midget one, because, you know, he's, if he kicked off, it'd be quite easy to sort of hold him back. But I'm talking about fully grown. So is that your warning to people? Don't be taking pictures of fully grown Chinese homeless? Well, yeah, I'm just saying, you know, don't don't be messing about going up to strangers and that and, and annoying them and stuff, right? Maybe well, I think that's a good rule of thumb, don't annoy them. Um, but, I mean, but that is a hell of a sighting, isn't it? We asked for a Chinese homeless, and they gave us a Chinese midget homeless. Many of the listeners are aware, Carl, that you're sort of fascinated by, by smaller people. Um, well, he's fascinated by difference, I think. Yes. I don't think he's having a go at people. You know, I mean, having when, a go. When, you, when you sort of stare at someone because they don't look like you, and let's face it, most people don't look like you, you're not having a go, are you? Well, like you, I say, the first time I saw Steve, I was never, never having a go. It was just, oh, that's different. <laughs> But, but you know, like you, you know, Steve, I was never having a go. It's it's just that yeah. thing of oh, right, interesting. What do you mean? No, just just you know, we've I've said before about yeah. I've got used to it and Steve it's the got same. used to it. What do you? What I you don't know, well, I, you know my feeling with this. I don't I I'm, don't really know where but, he's coming but from. But Steve with knows it. I'm not having a go either. Yeah. Carl used to carry around a book that was called the top 50 freaks of all time. Well, it's interesting you should mention that because we actually had an email from Richie who says that he's, he's been a fan of ours for many years and he's listened to lots of the radio shows we've done in the past and things. And he says, of all the people you've discussed, Carl, in the past, including some of the people from your, uh, your you know, odd magazines, who would you most like to spend the day with of all those people that you've encountered? Um, favourite... Favourite of all? Well, certainly who you'd want to spend time with, who you feel would be the most fascinating, the most interesting... 
You know, I mean, let's just, just recap on well, some of the... Well, Pillow Man, the bloke with no arms, no legs that can um, uh, roll a cigarette with his mouth. Yeah. No? Not impressed with him? <laughs> That's not sufficient. What about the three-legged juggler? So, hang on, let's just recap. This was a man with three legs? Three legs, right. right. And uh, it said his job, he became a juggler. Okay. Not using the, you know, the, the <laughs> gift that he'd been given. What would you, what, what would you suggest? Well, anything. Running, <laughs> swimmer. Uh, <laughs> just... You know, yeah. Uh, but yeah, what, what, what are the there? others? What are the other ones? There was a picture of a gentleman who was fascinated by him. He used to play the piano. Oh, he's got a tiny oh, head, doesn't he? Yeah, that's that. Um, that's the one who uh, he, he sort of ages fast. Right. So like every other week, he's having a birthday and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, that was weird. <laughs> he's not having a birthday every other week. His body's just aged, so it has the as has the appearance. Uh, the, the his biology is sort of like like he's seventy, but he's only like fifteen. He doesn't. They don't have a birthday every week. <laughs> <laughs> you, you idiot. But yeah, I don't know about knocking about with one a long time though. That's only for a day. Because it depends what I'm up to. <laughs> <laughs> because if you know, if we're going out and about, the pillow man would just be a bit of a drag. Whereas. <laughs> Whereas if, you know, if you're going for a, a, a walk, walk across, you know, the three-legged guy, <laughs> ideal. Oh, so, yeah. oh. Lots and lots of people emailing just with questions for Carl. Um, just a couple of quick ones for you, Carl. Wendy says, if Carl had to eat the same dinner every day for the rest of his life, what would, uh, what would he eat? Um, you see, it depends, doesn't it? I, I, I mainly eat just so I keep going. I'm not that bothered about... Because I don't really taste it anyway, I just shove it down. <laughs> you're like a... What, a you're dog. like a horse. I mean, to be honest, it annoys me the way people worry about food now and, and how, how there's so much to choose from. I think it's got out of hand. <laughs> I'll watch... Any form of choice really worries you, doesn't it? No, you don't just, like choice. It, no, choice is good, but not too much. It's like with anything now, if you go into a, a toffee shop, there's like loads Sorry. of different... <laughs> Where are you going to find a toffee so shop? So you're, you're in a you're in a fairy tale. Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. You're you're in a Dickens tale yeah. in the, uh, in the nineteenth century. You're in Shrek. And yeah, you, yeah, yeah. And you go into a toffee no, shop. No, what are you what's doing? your point? You go into a toffee, toffee shop. shop. What I'm saying, you go <laughs> yeah. you go into a shop full of toffee. You've just come from stuff. the candlestick maker. <laughs> right? You go you go oh, you go in there and there's just too much choice. It's like what. Uh, and I, I can stand there up to like four minutes, sort of going <laughs> up to know. four minutes. <laughs> so specific. That's four minutes. So he's in a toffee shop in a top hat. Well, he's only got going, four minutes. Good. He's only got four minutes because he's got to get down to the pea green boat. <laughs> that he's saving off. Yeah. It. No, good but, morrow. But, well, forget the toffee. Could I have some of your finest Oxfordshire toffees? <laughs> so you'd prefer it was just one selection of toffee. That's all they've got. Well, maybe two. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, right? There's now too much choice. Whenever you get a menu in a restaurant, it's not like you don't just go. Oh, right, what is the? Yeah, I'll have that. There's too much. It's like a book. It? And you look at it all. <laughs> and then you've got to that point now that people are even taking a risk when they're eating. What do you mean? Um, you know, in, in Japan or China or something, they're eating that fish <laughs> that if it's not cooked right, it can kill you. Right? Yeah. Not worth the risk when there's so many other fish. Yeah, I agree. Why do, why have are mackerel, they... have a bit of cod or whatever. <laughs> yeah, as soon as there's a the risk, risk yeah. take it off. I agree. Menu. I totally agree. Not worth what, it. What do, uh, we've got a fish that might or might, might not kill you. Well, um, is there anything that definitely won't kill you? Yeah, a bit of chicken won't kill you. Right. I'll play safe then. I love that. I love that. I love the chicken. That's what I'm saying. But anyway, we were talking about <laughs> sayings and that. <laughs> um, stitching time saves nine. Don't don't. You know, I'm never going to use that. I don't think anyway. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Suzanne You're never going to understand it fully, are Suzanne you? Suzanne repairs me stuff anyway. It, <laughs> so it doesn't, doesn't really matter. But what about the one um, about the one in, in greenhouses and that? People who live one? in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Well, I'm intrigued to know if he's fully got to grips with this. Okay. Just give us your explanation again of what you'd take that to mean. Well, just don't be chucking stuff about. Really. <laughs> So, <laughs> well, if that was it, they'd just say no, no, that. No, no, but, but that saying's been around a lot longer than we think. That's when people probably did live in basic glass houses and stuff. No, no, whoa, 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 What they mean whoa. now? Who has ever could, lived in a sorry, glass house? So this, they went, cavemen went from rock to a nice crystal structure, did they? That, what, what are you talking about? When did people live in glass well, no, houses? what they mean now, when, when that saying's used now, they mean sort of, you know, plasma tellies, <laughs> uh, ornaments... 
No, they don't. They're saying don't chuck stuff about because no, you'll break it. No, it's not about uh, damaging your own property. They don't mean you're inside the glass house throwing rocks inside your own glass it's house. It's a metaphor. Carl, what is an analogy? Uh, it's sort of like a little story told quickly. <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it's it a little though, story told quickly. Right. To what end? Well, it depends what the story is. You see, I, I just prefer sort of, you know, what you say is what you mean. So people in who live in a glass house have to answer the door. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I mean, because, you, you because, may be a genius, because I don't get that. People who live in glass houses have to answer the door. OK, because, let him, let's hear his explanation. Because the people knocking at the door will be able to see you, because it's a glass house. But you have to add a number of other things, uh, another other caveats. Surely, if you live in a glass house, don't walk around naked. Yeah. If you live in a... <laughs> <laughs> These are literals. But I just the idea that, in your head, there should be sayings for people who live in glass houses. Who is it that's living in a glass no. house? Well, it, I, I'm not talking about it. It's just that if everyone else is bringing up about these people who are living in glass houses, let's let's get to the real problems they've got. <laughs> he, still he still hasn't got to grips with the idea of the no, metaphor or the simile. Well, here's another saying, right, that I, that I learned recently from a mate, right? Um, oh, there's an elephant in the room. <laughs> okay, I, don't, I haven't heard that one, but explain it to me. It's like how, you know, you whenever we go out for something to eat or a drink or something, mm. it's normally after about five minutes, the sort of topic gets onto the shape of my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, it's interesting how, like, I'm the elephant in the room, right? Nobody's talking about it. You mention it once, suddenly it's the talk of the town. <laughs> It's, it's what I mean, everybody starts joining in, going, well, yeah, it is round, but it does suit you. And these are people who I don't even know sometimes, and they're all dipping in. And that is an elephant in a room. So you, you don't want people to discuss the shape of your head or the, or the lack of hair? Um, you would feel better, you would feel happier that they didn't mention that? Sometimes I think it's better that it's out there. It's made me a stronger person, though. It's the same way, you know, we were talking about religion and that. Samson Delilah, yeah. he got weaker without hair. Whereas with me, I think it's it's made me stronger. But would you ever wear a wig? Um, not really. What I was mean, a long wig like Samson? Well, the only time I wanted a wig was when I did jury duty once, wasn't it? and it was annoying that I was sat on the jury right in front of like these criminals, right? Everybody else has got disguises. The judges have them wigs on, right? <laughs> It is a disguise. That's a disguise. That's why judges wear them, right? So no. Well, then why did they print their name in the paper and have a picture? What do you mean it's a disguise? Well, it's a disguise, isn't no, it? No. If it was a disguise, they'd go in with one of those um, glasses with a nose and the beard attached. If it was a disguise, all judges would look like Groucho Marx. If it was a disguise. Well, I'm just saying that's that's what annoyed me when I was sat there on the front row, right? I couldn't have been any closer to the criminals, right? <laughs> right? I was sat there and I thought. Why didn't I just pop a little wig on or a pair of glasses? <laughs> I would have loved to have seen you in the front row at Crown Court. No, because... I'd love to see it because uh, in this country you're not allowed to show pictures of jurors. Uh, you can't take photos <laughs> in a courtroom. So there's always these sketch artists that draw drawings and it's on the news. The idea that we'd have seen 11 people and a sort of crusty the clown figure would have been amazing. Yeah, uh, oh, I would love to see the, uh, the artist do an interview because it would be like complicated people. Oh, hey, he looks like a character for... And then just a little round head. Charlie Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie Brown sitting on the end. <laughs> Carl, you said that your New Year's resolution was that you were going to learn something every day. Yeah, Have you learned anything today? If I, if I can. Uh, today, like, I don't know the full facts of it, but... Could I just say that when someone says they learn something new every day, that doesn't count if they forget it the next day. <laughs> no, Because but... that would be Groundhog Day learning. Well, the thing I learned today was about an octopus. Oh, Go yeah. on. What they can do is, um, you know, they've got eight legs and that. Yeah. They can, they, they can use, they can <laughs> use six of them legs to cover their head so they look like a little stone. They use the other two to run off. <laughs> right? But that's... He's, think, he's thinking of Squidly Diddy. Yeah, it's a Disney image in his head, <laughs> isn't it? He's thinking They're of... Pink. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, but, but anyway, that's that's you know. So that's it's not pink the main singing thing. a song in your mind <laughs> and running off. Yeah. No, but anyway, but something else I learned, right? Um, it's it's mainly about animals and that because that's yeah. normally quite interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a chicken somewhere. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And Specific. The, and the owner of it was getting fed up because 
you know, we had to feed it and that. Mm. But it embellishment, wasn't, embellishment, guesswork. No, come on, let's hear it. It mm. wasn't giving anything back. No eggs. No eggs, right? So he was like, oh, I'm sick of this. Anyway, someone told him, pop a little axe next to its little house, right? So when it comes out in the morning, thinking, oh, I'll have another lazy day doing nothing, right? <laughs> he saw this axe, and suddenly it was like, oh, right? Right? I'm Next for the day, shop, it thought, yeah. It laid about six eggs. It's rubbish. Through it's worry. it's rubbish. Quick. A chicken wouldn't recognise an axe as a threat. It wouldn't it wouldn't be able to reason that, oh, um, I better start working or I'll be I'll be meat. I better start It's absolute rubbish. Once again, it's this ridiculous thing you got that that one personifying animals uh, to, to 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 reasoning powers better than yours. I mean, I think, you know, you, you, you make chickens and monkeys cleverer than you in your stories, which is weird. It didn't happen and wouldn't work. Next. What, well, this, what else haven't you learned today? Do you think, then, that it's worth looking after animals, then, if, if there isn't any memory? If they don't know what's happening anyway... You're always going on about don't be cruel to things. Why would you ever want to be cruel to an animal, whether it can reason or not? No, no, no. I mean, I don't mean really cruel, but I mean, like, like there's an advert on that's, that's on in, the, you know, in Britain advertising some supermarket right and it's saying you know we look at before you know we kill our chickens and what have you they have a great life this is yeah. like the voiceover and you see happy chicken yeah and it's going uh we give it a good little house to live in it's got straw yeah it eats good yeah and then we kill it right? yes well that's better isn't it well no i don't think it is though is it because at the end of the day if i was that chicken right <laughs> i'm that chicken loving my life i can't believe me luck Right? It's got its nice little field that it's working on. Yeah. It's got its nice food and everything. But it's going to die. Yeah, we're all going to die. But then, if you were like a rubbish chicken, <laughs> that had like a rubbish life, you'd be going, oh, kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, they're not thinking what's going to happen tomorrow. They don't know that they're going to get they're going to get for the chop, are they? A chicken's not going, I'm fed up with this. I can't wait for that axe to be used on my neck. Yeah. Well, that, that's another... Th that, now you've mentioned the cutting off of an head, right? Yeah. On the chicken. That's something else I've learned, right? It's like a pinball is mine. Amazing. Isn't it? Ding, dong, boom, dang, ding, 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 Oh, head, ding, ding, chicken, ding, 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 ding head off. Ding, ding. No, no, right, but um, this was in a proper science magazine as well. Right? Yeah. So you can't have a go. This wasn't something on the internet. This was printed in a so, magazine. So, you read it. Okay, and what was it? And, here, it? and here comes the filter... It's going to come out nonsense. Right. Well, you could have Professor Stephen Hawking sitting there whispering stuff in your ear, and it could all be true, but when you said it, gobbledygook. <laughs> well, let's see then. Let's see, right? This, what they've done, they've done another experiment, right? Yeah. They've cut somebody's head off, right? And they've worked out that once, when, when the head comes off the body, yeah. it stays alive and that no. for 30 seconds. Well, no, they, they don't know that. They can never know that. No, they did it. They did this no. experiment. What's alive? The What's head. alive? But the, what, yeah, no, it, 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 uh, there's loads of issues here. One, no one's experimenting with human beings cutting their head off, Carl. Well, two, mm. no, 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 no. So you read no. this in what? Executioner's Monthly? This is yeah. in no, a No, two, proper... Carl, it's what your definition of alive is. Because you can be alive and have no conscience. No, no, but this is, this is where it gets weird, right? Yeah, I it's where, where, this is where it gets weird. <laughs> you talking about it. So the head's off. Right, yeah. and what they did was they chucked a load of questions at it, <laughs> <laughs> all sanctioned by the government. Yeah, this is yeah. all fine. So the head, the head lands perfectly on the neck and goes, <coughs> "What do you want to know?" And it said, it said, so they're asking questions, and it's going. Do you know what? To be quite honest, I don't answer, answer your questions. I'm a little bit annoyed about the execution still. Well, that that was the interesting thing. They said it's about. No, it's not. It didn't happen. Carl. Let me hear. Oh, don't talk. Let shit. me hear it. What are you talking about? Who? Uh, these people around in white coats going quick. Ask it a question. It's bleeding. Right. So they said. For about 25 to 30 seconds. The last five seconds, it is sort of like, can't be bothered answering them. <laughs> <laughs> right, but prior to that. But, prior but, to apart, that. From, oh, but apart from that, they, oh. were, they were chucking stuff. I don't think it spoke. I don't think it was like, yeah, two and two, four and stuff. It was more, um, it was to do with blinking. So blink once if you say oh, yes, yeah. blink twice. So, so I told it, I said, listen, when you die, you're probably not going to be able to talk because your jaw's going to be on the ground. You're not going to be able to open your mouth. If you do, you'll fall over backwards and hit your head. Now listen, blink one for yes and two for what? no. Yeah, right, yeah, not too bad. Yeah, is the axe nice and sharp? Yeah, promise, you're you talking promise? shit again. <laughs> you promise to do it? Yes. All yeah, right. well, yeah, yeah. The thing is, they wouldn't be able to do it with you, because if they cut your head off, it would just roll. It would roll away, because it's perfectly spherical. They would go, oh, no, there's Plus, no... Oh. it takes about 20 seconds, whenever you ask Carl anything, for <laughs> yeah. the question to process, <laughs> and for him to start to formulate an answer. Carl, 
It's what we've all been waiting for. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. All right, well, this one sent in from, uh, from Sam in New York, right? And it's about a fire that happened, right, in a really... Do you know, like, in New York, they have loads of big buildings, don't they? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, really, really tall ones and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And um, there was a fire in one of them, right? So they did as expected. They called up, you know, fire brigade and that. They turned up, right? Uh, fire engine parked up. It's like, right, where's the fire? And they said, oh, it's on, like, uh, floor 100 or whatever. And they said, oh, no, we've brought the fire engine with the short ladders. <laughs> Stupid mistake, but go on. Right? So anyway, so they said, well, how are we going to get up there? Yeah. Yeah. Right. We can't. But if they've only brought the short ladders. No, we can't. Let's go home. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Forget that it. was uh, monkey news. So, uh, th- so they said, well, there's a lot of, like, grippage. Because <laughs> they, they made up words, the uh, firemen, yeah, the NYPD firemen. <laughs> there's a lot of grippage! On the yeah. side of the building <laughs> and stuff. So anyway, they said, why don't we just go and get a monkey, right? So they oh. got they got a monkey. Whoa, Whoa, yeah. That's a is bit that, of a jump. Is they that just... policy now in, uh, in, in the New York Fire Department? Well, the, the, you know, you've got to think quick, haven't you? At the end of the day, if people are up there, you don't yeah. you don't start querying if it works or not. You try everything that, that you can to, yeah. to help someone out, right? That's the first thing I thought of. Was it a monkey? So it was quicker for them to go and get a monkey than to go back and get the long ladders. Why don't they get Spider Man? Why don't they get Spider Man? Yeah, cool Spider Man. Yeah, cool Spider Man. So anyway, so they got they got a monkey down there, and they said, right, where did they get it from? We don't know from the local zoo or something. Oh yeah, yeah. So they said, look, let's uh, you know we've got to remember there's there could be someone up there, um, right. and it'll shock them a bit if, <laughs> if, if, a monkey, looking, if a monkey comes in, right? Yeah. So they said, <laughs> yeah, I don't think they'd care. Get it their, their building's on fire. They're not going to yeah. go. That's weird. There's a monkey at the window. <laughs> They'll be screaming. Save me! Oh, it was a monkey. Oh, so, anyway, from them. so they said, right. We'll just get it a little small uniform and that. The smallest <laughs> you've got. <laughs> but whoa, but hold on though. Actually, where are you going to get that? I'm going back to the um, going back to the uh, station. We'll get the long ladders while you're there. No time. No time. No. I, I no. bought the small uniform. I just didn't bring the long <laughs> <Yeah>. ladders. <laughs> So anyway, it goes up there. It's got all the kit on and what. It's yeah. got its little adder on and all that. It grabs. Uh, there was there was like a little person up there. Manages to grab that. Not a little. Who was up there then? It was just someone just a, that was just the right size for a monkey to be able to rescue, which is <laughs> handy. Because if it had been anyone else, like a larger person or a family, we'd all be screwed. Yeah. No, I don't know about the size of it, but it's just the story saying how like uh, it was quite a big, big monkey, and that it was good at breaking down doors. Oh yeah, uh, it was good at climbing into small spaces and oh, stuff yeah. like that. Anyway, but it it's, bit, to... so it's big enough to carry a, a, a fully grown man, but small enough to climb through a, a, a cat flap. Yeah, sure. so uh, which is handy. So anyway, it managed to. You know, get Did it have the boots on as well. It got got the person, everything, and uh, now it says it. You know, it's sort of uh, it's on call if if they ever need it again. <laughs> so. Sure, and if they ever get anywhere again and they've forgotten the long ladders, but there's plenty of grippage, they just call for cocoa. <laughs> so that's this week's monkey news. Bollocks. <laughs>